Yeah, all right, let's shake things up a bit. Our solar system has been around for billions of years and is starting to get a little boring. So what if we shook up the positions of our planets? What if Jupiter was right next to the Sun? Or what if Earth switched places with Mars? Today, we're rearranging the planets in our solar system from largest to smallest, and then flipping them back to go smallest to largest. But how would this affect Earth? And would we have a new planet to call home? This is What If, and here's what would happen if the planets changed positions. Okay, first let's take a look at what would happen if the planets were laid out from largest to smallest, starting with the Sun. Mm, well, this configuration has a big problem. But before we tell you what that is, let's look at how the individual planets would line up. Jupiter is the granddaddy of the solar system. It's more than twice as massive as all the other planets put together. It would move from its current position all the way to Mercury's spot, placing it less than one-tenth of its original distance from the Sun. Think that's a crazy idea? Well, astronomers studying exoplanets tell us that this is not so unusual. Other large gaseous planets orbiting very close to their stars have actually been named hot Jupiters. Now, sitting in Mercury's orbit, Jupiter's orbit around the Sun, a trip that normally takes 12 years, would now take just 90 days. And the average temperature would rise to around 167 degrees Celsius, making Jupiter's gaseous atmosphere heat and swell. And what would happen to Jupiter's moons? Well, the icy layers of the moons Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa might start to sublimate, forming water vapor, revealing the oceans beneath. But that wouldn't last long. Given the intense heat of the sun, the water would evaporate. Now, if there's any life in Europa's ocean, it might welcome the warm thaw only to quickly realize things are a bit too hot to handle. Okay, in second position behind Jupiter would be the gas giant Saturn, taking the place of Venus. Things would be warming up here, too. The average temperature of Saturn would climb from minus 140 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. And in its new position, Saturn would look a lot different. Now, bombarded by the intense heat and radiation from the Sun, the planet's rings would disappear. The rocks found in the rings might survive, but the ice particles would melt and the dust would get blown away by solar winds. But who knows? The magnetic fields of Saturn and the Sun might interact and form brand new patterns. Okay, now we get to the best seat in the house, the Goldilocks Zone. Yeah, unfortunately, Earth no longer gets this spot. We'll check in on our new home in the solar system in a bit, but for now, the habitable zone is occupied by our third largest planet, Uranus. Now, normally, it takes Uranus 84 years to revolve around the Sun, but here, that shrinks to just a single Earth year. And instead of it being a cold, barren planet, it would now be basking in the Sun's rays. So, would this transform the ice giant into a habitable planet? Well, for habitability, you need three things. Liquid water, carbon-based molecules, and an energy source. And, well, with more heat from the sun, water ice in Uranus's atmosphere could become liquid water, so we can check that off the list. Now, what about carbon-based molecules? Well, luckily, they exist in Uranus's icy atmosphere of methane and ammonia. Check! And in its new spot closer to the Sun, there'd be way more energy available. So, yeah, looks like we got everything we need. But not so fast. Remember, Uranus has super high atmospheric pressure and also lacks a surface. So, the chances of this ice giant becoming Earth 2.0 are pretty slim. Maybe Uranus's moons would be a better spot to live. Or maybe things would improve for Uranus in a couple billion years. 
After all, Earth wasn't the most habitable planet at the start of its life either. Yeah, but there's no time for that. We've got more planets to check out. All right, in the number four spot, we've got Neptune, filling in for where Mars would normally be. Moving this ice giant so much closer to the sun would start warming it up considerably from its current minus 200 degrees Celsius. It would also go from having an orbit of 165 Earth years to being able to zip around the sun in just under two. But Neptune is known for having violent storms, and due to the increased heat and energy it would get from being this close to the sun, its storms might get even worse. Okay, I bet you're wondering about that big problem I was talking about earlier. Well, this new planet order would be seriously destabilizing. We've got four big planets now crammed into orbits that are very close. As these large planets swing around the sun, they'd exert huge gravitational pull on each other. This could tear the system out of whack, destroying our entire solar system. And even if that doesn't happen, something terrifying would happen to us in this newly redecorated solar system. In this new order, Earth would be the fifth planet from the Sun, sandwiched between Neptune and Venus. Now, if Earth were to orbit too close to Neptune, we could become the planet's 15th moon. Oops. But really, that might be our best case scenario. Being so much further away from the Sun, we'd now be getting less energy. Our surface water would freeze. All life on the planet would die out, including you. The only things that might stand a chance are a few creatures living inside deep-sea hydrothermal vents being heated by the Earth's core. Anyone want to be a snailfish? Okay, after Earth would come Venus, then Mars, then Mercury. This far away from the Sun, temperatures would plummet on all three planets. Venus's sulfuric clouds would condense, forming acid rain, sulfuric acid ice, and carbon dioxide ice. Not the kind of ice you want in your whiskey. Mars and Mercury, with little to no atmospheres, would become cold ice boxes orbiting the Sun. Yeah, none of this sounds great. I think I like the current order of the planets that we have now. But what if we tried this in reverse? What if we arranged the planets in ascending order with the smallest one closest to our sun? In this case, hot little Mercury would be in position number one. Yeah, just like today, so, so far so good. In orbit number two, we'd find Mars. Mars would get toasty, reaching an average temperature of 32 degrees Celsius. Like a hot day here on Earth. But any surface water might get vaporized, and carbon dioxide in the ice caps and in the soil would get released. Would this lead to a thicker atmosphere? Well, probably not, as the atmosphere would likely get stripped away by strong solar winds. So, unfortunately, the red planet won't become any more habitable with this new positioning. Okay, now we reach our happy place, the habitable zone. Would pulling Venus into the Goldilocks zone create ideal conditions for life? Eh, sorry folks, it doesn't look good. Sure, Venus would cool off a bit, but not enough to sustain liquid water, which is essential for habitability. Venus's carbon dioxide rich atmosphere makes things hot through an intense greenhouse effect. There's no water on Venus's surface and very little water vapor in the atmosphere. Even if a comet crashed and delivered water here, it would evaporate in the heat. So big thumbs down for new life. And how about Earth? Well, we'd be in fourth place. This would mean we'd get just half as much sunlight as we get today. That's not so bad, right? Well, unfortunately, this means we'd freeze. As similar to our other scenario, maybe some small pockets of life could survive, but humans wouldn't stand a chance. Without being in that perfect habitable zone, Earth just wouldn't be the same. In fifth place is Neptune, which is closer to the Sun compared to where it is now. Now, Neptune's gravitational field might ward off some asteroids headed toward Earth. It would also make for a beautiful night sky with Neptune shining brightly, 
second only to our moon. Further down the line, Saturn and Uranus would swap places, with Uranus coming in and Saturn moving out. Probably wouldn't change things all that much. Jupiter moves from 5th place to 8th place, 6 times farther away from the Sun than before. That's a big change. One year on Jupiter would now last nearly 14 times as long as before, from 12 Earth years to 165. Its hydrogen and helium atmosphere would stay pretty much the same, but the weirdest thing that might happen? Being this far out, Jupiter's gravity would have an effect on meteors, asteroids, and other rocks flying around the outer solar system. And due to its significant gravitational pull, Jupiter would attract them and begin to fling them around the inner solar system. It would be like the late heavy bombardment experienced by the early solar system. Planets would get hit with significantly more asteroids than they do in our current formation. Ugh, you know, I'm glad the planets aren't laid out from the Sun based on size. Big to small or small to big, either way, things wouldn't be good for Earth. We'd freeze and die. Life would cease to exist. Now, how did we get to the current order of our solar system anyway? 4.6 billion years ago, our solar system started off as a big blob of gas. Some of this collapsed due to gravity and formed the Sun, and other bits came together to form the planets. There was still a lot of gas and dust around, which concentrated into a dense, rotating disk. The rotation of this disk affected the positions of our planets. The smaller rocky planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, were pulled inward toward the Sun. And further away from the Sun, gas and ice condensed to form Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. A second transformational phase began 3.8 billion years ago. The orbits of Jupiter and Saturn became locked together briefly, creating instability in the solar system. To counter that instability, their positions changed. Jupiter migrated inward and Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune migrated outward. After a few million years, things settled down with all four assuming positions similar to where they are today. Regardless of how it all happened and why the planets sit where they do today, I'm just happy the Earth ended up in the Goldilocks zone. And based on this hypothetical, well, it doesn't look like any of the other planets would do as good a job housing humans, even if they were in the right spot. Let's just hope Earth stays right where it is for a long, long time. Now, what if the Earth was suddenly hit by a massive volcano that could destroy it? Well, then staying in the Goldilocks zone might be the least of our worries. But that sounds like a story for another What If.